Greetings, travelers, and welcome to Azeroth, and another installment of our adventure through the world of Warcraft, looking for all of its hidden secrets and environmental easter eggs. Today, we are headed back to the homeland of the humans to explore another part of the capital city that has become one of the most iconic locations of this franchise, Stormwind City. Specifically, we are going to be looking at the Dwarven District, the home away from home for the humans' closest allies. There is simply too much of the city to cover all at once in a timely manner, so let's dive into the Stormwind Dwarven District's secrets and easter eggs. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ali and welcome to Full Motion Videos, where we cover the lore, secrets, easter eggs, and smaller stories of your favorite science fiction, fantasy, and superhero franchises. If that sounds like your thing, why not subscribe and while you're down there, let me know what worlds and quests you want explored in the future. But with that out of the way, let's get started. In the canals to the left of the entrance of the Dwarven District, here, on your map, you'll find Colton Smith, one of several fishermen working in these waters. Now, there isn't much of note about him, you can't talk to Smith or interact with him in any way. That being said, he is one of the only fishermen named around the city's canals, so I figured there was something up with him. I have found several small fishing businesses with a name similar to Colton's, but nothing obvious enough that has me definitively pointing to it. Alternatively, Smith could be named after Colton Smith, an American mixed martial arts fighter of the same name. Hell, he could be named after someone that a Blizzard employee personally knows. Either way, it's odd that he's named, and I just wanted to point it out. As you head into the Dwarven District, to the left, here, on your map, you'll find a pair of older dwarves named Brohan Caskbelly and Wilder Thistlenettle. Both dwarves are refugees from Vanilla and Classic, and used to be quest givers for dungeons. Cask Belly used to be part of a chain of quests leading into the Sunken Temple, while Thistlenettle pointed players to the Dead Mines in Westfall, where he asked players to cut down his zombified brother as a mercy. It's sad that these quests are no longer in the game, but at least these dwarves get to relax for the rest of their days. A little further into the Dwarven District, here, on your map, you'll find an NPC named Morg Stormshot. At first glance, Morg doesn't appear to have any purpose, he isn't associated with any quest, and has no gossip text. It doesn't seem like his name is a reference to anything that I could find, either. But it appears that Morg was added purely for the Alliance Death Knight starting quest. The culmination of that questline has new Death Knights arrive at their faction capital, only to have food thrown on them by commoners throughout the city. If any new Death Knight players were to wander into the Dwarven District before heading to the Stormwind Keep, Morg here would pelt them with rotten fruit. That's pretty cool considering the players would have to go way out of their way to even see this guy. In a home close to the Deep Run Tram, here, on your map, you'll find a group of dwarven hunters that can train players in their ways. Most of them aren't of any interest to us, but one of them is named Thorfinn Stoneshield. His name might be a reference to Thorin Oakenshield from J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, who quests with Bilbo Baggins to reclaim his rightful place as king under the mountain. Admittedly, this one is a bit of a stretch, but it did pop into my mind while exploring and I wanted to be thorough. In the center square of the Dwarven District in the market, here on your map, you'll find Hank the Hammer standing in the corner, a blacksmith and a member of the Mithril Order. Like many NPCs, he was part of a quest chain in Vanilla and Classic that is no longer in retail. His task was to have player blacksmiths craft an item before sending them to a more skilled smithy to train further. Hank's name may be a reference to the baseball legend Hank Aaron, who was sometimes known as Hammer and Hank, or simply Hammer. Next to Mr. The Hammer, you'll find the gnome Binnick Boltshear. Back when World of Warcraft had players collect keys for dungeons and other gates throughout the world, Binnick was a locksmith who would craft replacement keys if players ever lost important ones. However, with the removal of the key and lock system from the game, Boltshear has found himself without a job. His gossip text actually reflects this, lamenting about how a locksmith is supposed to find work in a world without any locked doors. At least Blizzard has a good sense of humor about it. Oh, and before you leave this area, take a look over at these boxes stacked in the corner. On the topmost one, there's a scroll with the image of an armored dwarf. This is presumably a label of some sort, and these crates are full of armor mint for the stocky dwarves of Kazmodan. Standing beside the fountain outside the Golden Keg pub, here, on your map, you'll find a gnome named Shoni the Shylant. 
As is common around these parts, she used to be a quest giver in Classic and Vanilla, where she would point players to both the Deadmines and Nomergon. In the present, though, she is just an NPC standing wordlessly in the city. Obviously, her name is a fun play on Silent, spoken as if drunk. However, I also think her first name may be a reference to the video game and electronics company Sony. During the height of EverQuest, the game was run by Sony Online Entertainment, and was one of World of Warcraft's main rivals. Thus, Shoni the Shylent. A bit of a stretch, maybe, but it's fun to imagine a small jab at her rival remains after all of this time. At a traveling market stall outside of the Royal Bank, here, on your map, you'll find the engineering supplier Billy Bub Cogspinner. I have nothing to say about him except his name seems like a play on Billy Bob, and I think that's hilarious. Moving on. Taking a step inside the Golden Keg, here, on your map, you'll find a pub frequented by the dwarves and gnomes of the district. Behind the bar, you'll find the tavern keeper Colin Field. Interestingly, he mistakenly welcomes players to the Pig and Whistle, another tavern in the city. Definitely just a small developer error, but I'm going to choose to invent a story that he once worked at the bar in Old Town before striking it out on his own and starting the Golden Keg with some dwarven friends. Field himself is a reference to a real-world bartender named Colin Peter Field, the head bartender at the Hemingway Bar at the Ritz in Paris. This location was voted the best of the best bar in the world by Virtuoso in Las Vegas in 2016, and Field himself has invented several drinks such as the Picasso Martini, Highland Cream, Serendipity, and Clean Dirty Martini. Sadly, it does not appear that any of these were referenced in the Tavern Keeper's shop. Come on, Blizzard, you gotta, you gotta fix that. Upstairs, you'll find a trio of shaman trainers. One of them, Bolner Hammerbeak, is actually used as a legendary shaman card in Hearthstone, but the one we're interested in right now is the Draenei Farseer Umbrua. She was the very first alliance shaman trainer in the Eastern Kingdoms, and used to be located out in the Valley of Heroes on a small outcropping of land far, far away from others. Here, she lamented that the people of Azeroth rarely listened to her about nature. After the Cataclysm, she was moved to the Golden Keg, and eventually the Hammerbeaks were added, who now gives Imbrua the conversation she seeks. Funnily enough, she still has the same gossip text, though. Someone should probably update that. Finally, before we head out, look downstairs and you'll find a bar patron named Bulger. He's quite a dapper little gnome, but the reason I wanted to talk about him, I've seen in my research that if he's attacked, he apparently says, Help! Guards! It's going to step on me! I don't have a Horde character good enough to get this far into Stormwind on my own to substantiate this, but it was funny enough that I just had to mention it. Next door, here on your map, you'll find the Royal Bank of Stormwind. Just like the Counting House in the Trade District, there are tons of small details here. Scrolls and wanted posters and quills and gold and that's just awesome. Additionally, just like the Counting House, if you combine all of the first names of the bank tellers, you'll find that they are references to real people. Jamie, Lee, and Curtis Crester are references to the actress Jamie Lee Curtis. And Leslie, Anne, and Warren Wainwright are references to Leslie Ann Warren. Also, there is no doubt in my mind that the banker in the back, Phineas G. Bankworthy, is in part a reference to bank alts. He is named and dressed in a way that many players would solely design a character used only for bank slots. Love it. In the Dwarven District Auction House, here on your map, you'll again find a room adorned with tons of items being sold. In a lot of ways, it's similar to the Auction House in the Trading District, but the environmental designers here decided to make the items here fit more with the setting. Instead of general goods, most items seem to be products that the Dwarves would be making in this district. Guns, axes, hammers, and swords, mostly. There's even a globe of Azeroth, hearkening back to the popularity of the Explorer's Guild in Ironforge. In this room, you'll find Auctioneer Hess. Though while I was recording this footage, he was a human, Hess is actually a worgen and will transform at times. Hess appears to be a reference to the author Herman Hess, who wrote the novel Steppenwolf. That book speaks about how people have two natures, the man and the wolf. So Hess being a worgen is a fitting reference. Additionally, we also have Auctioneer Fitzgerald. It also crossed my mind that this could be a reference to the author F. Scott Fitzgerald, writer of The Great Gatsby, similar to the Hess reference. 
If that is the case, I figure that the third auctioneer here, Lawfer, would also be a reference to a classic author. Yet, I could not immediately find any such writer in my research. It's entirely possible that I am simply uncultured swine, so please let me know in the comments if that is indeed the case. On the streets near the auction house, here on your map, you'll find a human couple sitting on a stoop, tinkering with some machine. The man's name is Riley Tidy, and the woman is Lefty Lucy. They are, of course, references to the saying, Righty Tidy, Lefty Lucy, instructions on which way to turn screws in the real world. Also, nice touch that they would be tinkering on a machine that would definitely require screws. Further along this street, here, on your map, you may notice a giant sewer rat living under this big old keg of ale. The mob in and of itself has a comically large health pool. At the time of recording, he had 1.13 million HP and would take forever to kill. I believe this is a reference to the idea that there are giant rats living in the sewers of massive cities like New York. But honestly, let's just leave the big guy alone. He doesn't even drop anything special and he's just a, a cool bit of flavor for the city. In Stonehand Mining, here on your map, you'll find the mining trainers and suppliers Goldman and Brooks Stonehand. There's a ton of mining items around this building, but what I wanted to point out was how different the main room upstairs looks. This building uses the same layout as the interior of most single bedroom residences in the city, but instead of a big old bed up on the second floor, we have what looks like an office space. It's not huge, but little differences like this go a long way in making your world feel lived in. Like, this implies that the stone hands are doing well enough for themselves that they can afford a home and an office, and in this economy. It's just a fun touch. If you step into the Shady Lady, the black market shop here on your map, you'll find a store full of a ton of character. The building is dark, appropriate for such a shady establishment. And yes, food and drink adorn every surface. But throughout the room, you'll see artifacts from across Azeroth that maybe shouldn't have found their way here. A Taran totem, a crocolisk statue, a stuffed bear, highborn figurines, and several statues of birds of prey. They even have a wanted poster on the wall, though given the nature of this establishment, I wonder if it's so they can watch out for someone dangerous, or if someone in this room is wanted by the Stormwind Guard. The NPCs here are full of character, especially impressive for people you can't actually interact with. Lana Ashwin wanders the room, speaking to all manner of inanimate objects, as does Daniel Kinsey, who is enraptured by his conversation with a cooked pig. Daphne, the Rose Bloom, surely got her name from the lovely rose in her hair, a small detail you don't normally see on NPCs. Near the bar, you'll find Sean Copeland, in discussion with another man. Copeland is named after the real-world Sean Copeland, Blizzard's head of lore and historian supervisor. Fun that he'd be in here, surely arguing about the origin of all of these artifacts. Also, before you go, take a peek at the shady lady's owner and proprietor, Quincy Cutler. Yes, he seems quite professional and put together, but one look behind the counter? Sure, he's wearing finery where it can be seen, but he's basically in his underwear and sandals. That is hilarious. At the back of the Shady Lady, here on your map, you'll notice a door that opens out into the alleyway. Interestingly, this is the only way you can get to this area on foot, otherwise you must fly into it from above. This is a strange area known as Cutthroat Alley. There isn't a lot going on here, there's just some crates and barrels, trees and rats, and a single open door leading into a two-story home. There's nothing of particular interest in this building save an absurdly large bed, though this is the only part of the area actually labeled Cutthroat Alley. This part of the city has no purpose in game, but has been used frequently by role players, both serious and rowdy. The large bed will make more sense when you think about it. I'm not sure if the developers at Blizzard had any intended purpose for Cutthroat Alley, but as it is, it's been in game for over a decade and is basically only used for RP. In the canals of the Dwarven District, here on your map, you'll find a heavy weapon armor shop named Pots Plates. First of all, that's a cute name. Pots and plates, as in cooking and serving food? Now I'm imagining someone wearing cooking utensils into combat. Inside, you'll find the heavy armor merchant Allison Potts. Though I was not able to find a first-hand source for this, it's also relatively accepted throughout the community that Allison Potts is named after the partner of a Blizzard engineer, put in as a wedding present for the couple. 
That is incredibly believable, especially since Potts' character model was updated during the Shadowlands expansion to showcase the new ethnicity options, but was quickly reverted to her old model. I think that better representing a variety of peoples is 100% worthwhile in-game, but if this character was meant to represent a real person, that seems like the most obvious reason to change it back for me, especially since, like, no one else was changed. Either way, it's a neat bit of history. There's another NPC in Stormwind named after a real person. The Stormwind Stablemaster Karen in Old Town is named after a former Blizzard employee named Karen Baxter. She sadly passed away in 2010, but she lives on in-game. This is actually my favorite tribute that I've found in the game so far. And if you want to know her incredible story, check out my video talking about the secrets in Stormwind's Old Town. Or if you want something a bit more modern, check out my video talking about the time-locked town in the Dragon Isles. It should actually be gone by the time you watch this, so I wanted to make a video preserving the fun details in this time-locked area. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time.